Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo, and in this video I'm going to talk about all Spider-Man games for the Nintendo Wii. Spider-Man 3 is actually Spider-Man 2 with a new paint job, but considering that Spider-Man 2 was a masterpiece, I grew up with the game, it will always be a masterpiece for me, Spider-Man 3 is pretty good and the worst, both at the same time. I mean, the combat is mindless button mashing and the missions aren't that wow, they are rather repetitive and many of them are boring, boss battles don't really feel like boss battles since they give you a similar feel to the normal button mashing gameplay you do, but this game is a meme goldmine. You can find so many things that are done in such a bad fashion that you, you just love them. It's love at first sight. Like in Spider-Man 2 you get a lot of activities in this city and the game follows the movie very loosely. Meaning that if you play the game you have no idea what happens in the movie. And the game has more villains than in the movie, you also fight Lizard and Morbius, the man vampire. You get the black suit and roaming New York is as fun as ever. So this game is good and bad at the same time. But the bad can be easily overlooked when you see that the game is a meme gold mine. Oh and worth mentioning is that the Wii controls are actually pretty comfortable and they don't get in the way. It's, it's the same game as you get on the other consoles, even if you have Wii modes. Spider-Man Friend or Foe is a basic beat'em up. Many people consider it a very good game since they grew up with it, but I didn't and I still can't get over the idea that Spider-Man is earthbound. He swings only on few occasions. It's unorganic for the character. But let's get personal opinions aside and tell you about the game. So you play, the, so the story unfolds in seven different locations, and you play with sixteen different characters. What you see in the video is what you will mostly do in the game, like in the usual beat em ups. A nice touch, though, is the team takedown. You can combine two characters and get a screen, a screen clearing combo. The game is called Friend or Foe because in this one Spidey works in teams with his foes to protect the earth, so the foes become friends for this occasion. Overall it's a pretty standard beat em up. If you know the genre then you know what to expect from the game. Spider-Man Web of Shadows is for a reviewer a hard game to give a verdict. Why? Well it's awesome, but you can still count flaws that don't bother you but well if you don't like the style of the game, you can put them in the flaws basket. Ok, so when you play this game, never judge the game by its cover. Not in the literal sense, but when you play it, you will encounter bad voice acting, but the type of bad voice acting that is very likable. I mean, those voice cracks or overreacted reactions are fun, even if they sound, well, unprofessional. But not only that the voice acting sounds unprofessional, but the whole game doesn't feel that professional, as it isn't a serious game. I mean, it tries to be mature, with the inverted commas to them, meaning that the game has a dark allure. The city is in chaos, Venom is going on a rampage, but still, it feels teenagey. The game was either written by a teenager, or it was intended for a teenager. But it's the type of teenage game that is awesome, and even if you can spot that it's not intended to be a scientifically accurate dark story, the exaggerated actions are badass. I mean, you can breakdance fight on walls, you can do sick combo moves in the air to obliterate your opponent, for black suit fans you can switch to the black suit whenever you want and you can permanently play with the black suit as much as you want, the swing mechanics might feel clunky at times, but the controls are actually pretty good. Also as I said, the actions feel like a teenager tried to write a dark story. At one point I thought they made a crossover with GTA San Andreas. Or, well, more like Saints Row, but San Andreas is more popular. Anyway, so my advice is to not judge the game by first impressions. Play it till the end. It's an incredibly badass game that should get more praise and better reviews. It's badass, especially the combat animations. That, even if on Xbox and PS3 look more awesome, on the Wii they are still good. They are still good looking.
even if they look more plain. Oh, and an unforgettable feature in the game is that Spider-Man can Naruto run. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions has an amazing presentation, but never play it on an emulator. What you see in the video is emulator footage. So if you try to play it on the Dolphin emulator, you will have actually some sort of Spider-Man on drugs. Some sort of Spider-Man LSD version. But if you play it on a Wii, it looks normal, just like it should look. But because it looks funnier this way, I will leave the emulator footage on screen, rather than filming my Wii. The game, it falls short on the gameplay department. And here the controls worked, but still they felt clunky, all the time. And I had times where the controls wouldn't respond. And overall the controls felt so clunky, that after an hour of playing, I said, screw it. It had a killer narrative, but I don't want to play this stuff anymore when there are so many good games I haven't played yet. So I watched the game movie on YouTube from where I left the game. And I want to say that this story is awesome. It's funny, it's dramatic, it has jaw-dropping CGI, I recommend you watch it. Its movie quality is very good. It could win an award for how good the story is. Gameplay-wise, it's a varied game. It's split into four Spider-Man sequences. In one of them you play, you play with the Amazing Spider-Man, in another one with the Black Suit, in another one with Spider-Man Noir, which has the stealth part of the game, and Spider-Man 2099, which is mostly brawling and free-falling. I recommend you watch the game's movie, it's a very good story. The presentation of the game is top-notch, but the gameplay mm, is kind of annoying, especially on the controls department. Spider-Man Edge of Time got bad reviews, but I don't understand how. GameSpot calls as flaws that the combat is too simple and the spaces are too confined. To the first one, I want to say that not only you can unlock more moves with points, but right from the bat you get quite a number of moves you can perform. You get a light attack and a heavy attack, plus you can web enemies and zip kick them, and also each one of the two Spider-Man you play with has a special ability, which kind of feels alike, but it's unique to have this thing as a permanent power. The Amazing Spider-Man has the spider sense, meaning that for a short period of time he's invulnerable to attacks. And Spider-Man 2099 creates a decoy and slows down time being too invulnerable to attacks when he uses his ability. So you get a lot of moves and for me the combat never got boring. A part I have to admit though, the tasks you do are kind of simple and stereotypical. Meaning that you have to platform in Spider-Man style, pull switches, avoid obstacles, but even if they are typical tasks, they have enough variety to them to be nice every time. They are not the exact same thing, even if, in their core, they are the same handful of activities. And the gameplay feels secondary many times, as the true spectacle of the game is its story. The main superstar in this game is not Peter Parker, but Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara. Ok, you play with both Spider-Man in tandem, but this game features one of the most annoying Peter Parkers. The attitude of Peter annoyed me in this game. But the story is epic, kept me wanting more. I wanted to see how the story unfolds, it was an incredible one. Ok, the science part is debatable, but as a narrative, it was awesome. The graphics were nice, the controls felt clunky at first, but after a few minutes they were comfy and good. It's a game I recommend you play. I liked it a lot. The Amazing Spider-Man is a good game, but be warned that it doesn't abide to the classic formula. People who like challenging games or to do stuff their own way won't like this game. The fighting mechanics are new. Now you have an attack button and a dodge button and you can web strike with another and interact with another button. I know it sounds close to the classic one, but you will feel many times that all of the fights almost feel like an interactive cutscene. In fact, all the game feels like a big interactive cutscene. 
The game tells you which button to press and everything is pretty easy and straightforward. Boss fights aren't exciting or challenging, you just do what the game tells you to do and poof, that's it. Also another thing I didn't like, in spite being a nice try, is the camera that is too close to Spider-Man. It takes part of the satisfaction traveling. I don't like the many enclosed areas in the game either. It's in there. Also the web rush feature isn't that great of an idea, because it pauses the game for you to choose where you want to zip, and it puts a halt on the gameplay and the flow of the game. Ok so this was the video, if you liked it please hit the like button and subscribe and if you want follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, I left the links to those in the video description. Also if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!